Oh man, I gotta talk about this, you guys. 1-800-449-8255, The Clark the Shark Show. Now, normally, here on The Sharky Show, I don't review albums from the modern era. Uh, pretty much 1990 on through into today, 2023. I don't, I don't review really any of the music because, um, you know, if you're not going to sign my band, GE, Clark the Shark, Greenhouse Effect, um, then fuck it all, dude. I ain't listening to your music then. Um, yeah, dude, 1991, I should have been signed or maybe 1989 or 1988. Uh, 1988 when I was 23, dude, right out of the fucking canon. Sure, dude, that band with Phil Keegan on guitar, me on drums and lead vocals and Carmody on bass. Maybe that could have and should have been signed. That was incredible, but uh, for different reasons in 1988, I, Clark the Shark, wasn't going to get signed. And that was because heavy metal was dominating the scene in 1988. So uh, and then, of course, later on, 1991, moving forward, it was this whole other uh, problem and thing going on, which I won't go into because I get very angry. Uh, when I think about it and talk about it, but um, I want to talk about this album by The Who. Now, we all know this isn't really The Who. There's no John Entwistle, no Keith Moon, no Kenny Jones. Uh, there isn't even Simon Phillips. I mean, this is just Pete, Roger, and a bunch of musicians. Um, but I'm not kidding, you guys. This album, just called Who?, is almost like a five-star album. This thing is a classic. And uh, I don't want to say that. I have to say that because it's true. I've listened to this thing all the way through once in the bathtub, and I was like, whoa, what the f what is this? You know, it's really P Towns and Solo, you know, with Roger singing, I guess. That's what it really should be. You know, but whatever. They call it the who, so... I don't really want to call this the who, you know, because to me, uh, it's not the who and, and it's not the who to you either. But uh, whatever, dude, the Matrix uh, calls it the who. Um, so but the just the musical sheer quality on this album. Um, the, I mean, they give it the stars. I've checked out the stars of this and they give it four, three and a half. Uh, they're afraid to give it five, but if it were me, Clark the Shark, reviewing this album, I would give it five stars. Right here on the Clark the Shark Show, 1-800-449-8255 from the fabulous golden EIB Sharkerphone. Um, and I can't believe I'm saying that. Now, there's two recent Who albums. There's that one from, uh, I think, 2006 called Endless Wire. And that album is interesting, but it's not nearly as good as this one, okay? And I think a lot of Who fans and, and just musical critical fans in general, they believe that too. This album by uh, this thing now they call The Who is very good. I mean, every single song is good on this. And um, I think because The Who are just so old, you know, they're like almost 80 you know they're old dudes and that's why they can't say it's great or just fantastic or they can certainly say it's really good though and give it a four out of five and they do but i'm not kidding this album really is a five star album on a scale of one to ten it's like like a 9.7 this is really a solid good album all the way around and it's much better than uh, Endless Wire. Now, Endless Wire 2006 came out 24 years after the uh, very underrated It's Hard from 1982. Now, Endless Wire, I'm going to review that. And I'm going to go through it song by song. And it is very interesting, that album. Uh, it seems 
like it has these traditional uh, who problems. Some of the songs try too hard on Endless Wire and they almost work, but not quite. But overall, that album gets like a 7.8. It's a pretty good album. You know, 8, 9, and 10 aren't lit up, but it's almost like an 8. Uh, I tell you, it's decent. Uh, you know, and, and in certain moods, when I listen to it, I'm liking it more and more, you know. But it's just that there's something about some of the lyrics and I don't know, maybe I haven't given it enough of a chance. But uh, Endless Wire, um, you know, it's a problematic album, but it's, uh, I can, you know, these two recent Who albums, you know, they both uh, are totally different. I mean, it completely, they couldn't be any more different. Apples to oranges. This one is an apple and that uh, Endless Wire is an orange uh, neither of them are real Who albums. You know, John Entwistle's not on it. It's not the Who to me. But uh, for whatever the product and uh, thing is that they call it the Who, uh, they're both real interesting. Uh, they're both solid and good. But this album, as I listen to it over and over, I realize this thing is like a classic Who. And I didn't like it at first. Uh, the first time I played it, I still don't like the one song. Um, but then the rest of the album gets really good. Um, and I'm going to go through it song by song. Um, man, what a good album. Uh, I know it's just Pete Townsend solo. And let's see what star. Yeah, it gets good star. It should get five. It doesn't get that. But if somebody gave it a B plus or something. But it definitely, you know. Now... All this music must fade. Um, very interesting way to open up, uh, open this album. Um, like the rest of the album, it's maybe more interesting than good, uh, but it's plenty good, you guys. Um, some of this almost strikes me as like prog, like progressive rock. Now I know the Who don't do all that weird, you know, time signature stuff. But it almost seems on some of these songs like they're about to or something. They never quite do. But uh, we all know the song Ball and Chain. That song, you know, 429. Interesting, you know. Um, you know, maybe the lyrics or I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I Don't Want to Get Wise is uh, one of the best songs I've ever heard Pete do. I'm not kidding. I don't want to get wise for that song alone. 354. This album is, you know, you're getting into something killer. And then detour again, another like song that should be lit up in blue. Uh, and then you realize as you go down the list of these songs, um, you know, beads on one string and hero ground zero and, these songs are all really solid. Uh, it's well played. It's not really the who playing it. You know, it's Pete and, uh, you know, it's just Pete and Roger. It's two guys, the two. It's not the who, but with a bunch of other people playing. And uh, Street Song is really good. And I'll be back. Uh, man, what a song. <laughs> That's probably one of the best songs on the album. You just got to hear it. I love the way these songs have acoustic guitar going with the drums. It kind of goes, uh, it's really melodic, you guys. And I've searched and searched for these melodies and they are original. Like much of the Who, you know, the Who, Pete Townsend, usually his melodies are very original. I've just heard The Who rip off a few things. It's very rare. 98% of what The Who does is original. Uh, Break the News, man. Really solid. Really solid. Really good. You just got to hear it. I'm, I don't even want to give it away. I want you to hear this whole album. And Rockin' in Rage, which is... Um, I think it could have been better, you know? But... 
uh, it's still really good as it is. Some of these songs, kind of like Ray Davies and the Kinks, they kind of don't quite uh, hit it out of the park like I wish they would have. But uh, she rocked my world, certainly. Uh, an interesting way to end the album, you know. It's, uh, you know, it's 11 songs, you guys. And it's also solid, melodic, uh, catchy. Some of these songs are actually, like, catchy. I mean, there's bonus tracks, too. I don't, I don't you know, I've heard these songs, but, you know, I got to go back and hear them again. And, uh, but um, just the way the acoustic guitar and the drums and uh, the bass with the guy Pino, a Pino Palladino, whatever his name is, Um and then uh, I don't really like, uh, you know, Ringo's son drumming that much. And it is one thing that might hold this album back, perhaps. Pino Palladino is good on bass, so he's like an Entwistle in himself. And, uh, you know, they're Pete and Roger. You know, they make it seem like they do most of it, but there's all these other guys. Zach Starkey's drums, both live and in the studio with The Who, are problematic simon townsend actually uh does like a song here and it's really good you guys <laughs> they should let him write more songs um but just the atmosphere the how melodic this is you know it's these songs and it tells a story like the whole thing is a rock opera like it's all connected it, pete says it's not but it's like uh, the atmospheres it captures, it kind of reminds me in some weird way. It doesn't sound like that, but like Genesis, the lamb lies down on Broadway. Uh, it doesn't sound anything like that, but the way that tells a story, I kind of think uh, both this album and Endless Wire tell a story like that. No, not like that, but uh, I love the, you know, the storytelling and the, the atmospheres that are uh, captured on all these these albums. Uh, on Endless Wire, they capture some kind of atmosphere, but they don't really hit it out of the park in the melody game or the you know ambiance game, the way they hit it out with these songs. Man, this album is really good. I almost want to just play this again over and over. <laughs> it's so good. This is such a good album. I Don't Want to Get Wise, one of the best songs by The Who, you know, um, and of course, the one by Simon Townsend, I think, is Break the News. And it's uh, like my favorite song on the album. I hate to say that, Pete. But who? An acoustic driven keyboard progressive rock album. Um, I wish it had Simon Phillips drumming. I even wish it had Kenny Jones. The Who should bring back Kenny Jones. So it seems like you got three guys from the who in the band the same way i feel like the stones should bring back mick taylor and bill wyman if they're you know 80 years old and they're going to go on tour well you might as well you know do it right and you know go all the way with it wouldn't you you think but you know kenny jones is probably too old to play drums now but dude um i would love to hear them clone like keith moon get a hold of his dna i wish he wasn't cremated i wish uh they buried him and you could get his DNA and make another Keith Moon because I still think the who would be just as fucking rad if they had like Keith Moon's son on drums instead of Ringo Starr's son, Zach. It would be a lot better. You guys right here on the Clark, the shark show, 1-800-449-8255. But seriously, on a scale of one to 10, this album is a high nine, like above 9.5. Uh, there's only nine, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, you guys. And this album is like that good. And it gets good reviews. It really is good. And it's because every single song on the album is super solid, super atmospheric. You sit there and you are literally mesmerized by this classic, amazing Who album. I'm not kidding, you guys. Uh, the atmospheres that are captured and the uh, 
ambiance, uh, and it's a really pop uh, present album. It's not like got a lot of reverb, like it's trying to take you back. It's like taking you into the future. This album, it's really present. And, uh, and Roger Daltrey singing for how old he is, is not bad. And Pete too, you know, and then Pete is doing these little narrative things that are just as interesting and as good as ever. I hope the who make another album right now. It's 2023. And I don't think they're planning on another. I don't know if they are, but I would love to hear who part two of this album. It seems like there's a little story here, you guys, that needs to be, um, you know, expanded upon or something. I don't know if this officially is a story, but, um, yeah, I kind of wish like the song ball and chain, uh, could have been like a better song. Like it is the song that got the radio airplay or something, but, um, it is. It sounds almost like a song that should be on Endless Wire, you guys. Uh, maybe not really, but kind of. It's kind of like overdone and trying too hard. You know, maybe kind of like the Who face dances type of stuff or It's Hard. But on this album, dude, it's like the Who aren't trying too hard. This album is effortless. And I swear to God, you guys, it almost couldn't have been better. The Who, self-titled Who from 20... 21 or 2019 it's really uh what is it 2019 i think of this as like well because covid hit you know and that makes me think this is even newer or something but this is four years ago now so i think the who are due old as they are to make another album and i hope it's like who part two uh and they turn this into a whole story like tommy or kind of like endless wire but better I'm going to review Endless Wire and I'm going to go through everything that's kind of problematic where that album fails and where this new Who album succeeds, you guys. Uh, Pete went and learned some tricks. He's an old dog that learned new tricks for this album and it really works. And, you know, Roger Daltrey singing doesn't save the album. It adds to it. And Pete's beauty, like the acoustic guitar and... You know, the, all the guitars he, he does. Uh, kind of like the Who Tommy in some weird way. Um, there's It seems like some of the songs have layers of guitar or acoustic guitar. And it sounds really fucking killer, you guys. The Who. Who. 2019. Pre-COVID. One of the last albums released before COVID hit, you guys. And then when The Socialist... Uh, utopia people came and you know stole our election and or you know I don't know how they did it printed votes or electronic voting machines with COVID and then they stuck a 89 year old fossil into our White House a guy who just always falls down and he's fucking embarrassing dude he's even older than the who or something and you fuck dude if you're older than the who you should not be in the White House you guys yeah, I, that comes straight from the heart of the shark. Right here on the Clark the Shark Show from the Golden EIB Sharkerphone, the most amazing show, you guys, where I just gave you the gospel, the truth. I'm Clark the Shark, and you just got probably the only review of this acoustic, atmospheric, amazing, who killer Who album. It's not The Who. It's just Pete and Roger and some other guys. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and call it the who. I don't fucking care. It's really good. Who? And uh, 2019. I didn't like this album at first. I played it all the way through and I hated it. And then uh, I'd say just maybe three or four months ago, I played it again. And I was like, whoa, what is this? And then, you know, just like ever since then, I've been playing it. And it is amazing, you guys. This album will really shock and surprise you. And it shows you there is still plenty of gasoline in the tank of whatever this thing is today that's called The Who. Dude, this album has got it, you guys. Of all the old bands, you know, like Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin and The Stones and, you know, just the Moody Blues, all the golden oldies, I would say The Who have made the best album of the old guys' network. 
right here on the Clark the Shark Show. And you just heard probably the only review you'll ever need or want of this album. I want you to go buy this album, you guys. And if you're a young person who's only 20 years old right now in 2023, check this album out. Check out this songwriting and learn from this master. Learn from this pro, Pete Townsend. This is how you make an album, you guys. 2019, who? I'm Clark the Shark, and I'm out of here, you guys. Peace.